Hello everyone, welcome to Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bisque painting tutorial for our September Brenda's Bisque Box of Monster Mania. Today we are painting our Clay Magic uh, mold number 3451 Gangbuster Zombie. Um, so this is our painted zombie and then I have our bisque um, just like you would have had in your box. Um, so I'm going to start with base coating him with our black and I used our Duncan Bistain OS476 black and I'm just shaking it up a little bit and I put a little pile on my um, tin foil you can use your tile your paper plate whatever works for you I dip my brush into my nylon round painting brush into my water first and then I just pat it and that keeps our water from or our paint from going up into our ferrule and makes it easier to wash out and then I just dip my brush into my black paint and kind of load my brush up. And to base coat, you're just painting your um, base coat color of your choice. Um, for our Halloween pieces, we used black. And you want to brush back and forth or up and down and just paint it out so you don't have any ridges or puddles. So you have a nice smooth surface for dry brushing. If you do have ridges and puddles, um, that will um, be very obvious when you're dry brushing because the paint will build up on that. Um, so you want to make sure you brush out that paint good. And then as it dries, because it's a ceramic paint-based paint, it does have a self-leveling agent in it and it covers better um, than the cheaper quality acrylic paints. Um, so again, I'm just brushing back and forth and covering up any little black any white areas with the black. You want to make sure you also do your bottoms so your bottoms look nice. I also do the little um, inside the hole where the thickness of your piece is and that just makes your piece look nice and finished if someone um, picks it up and looks at the bottom. So I'm just brushing back and forth. Sometimes you have to dab up and down to get it into the little nooks and crannies. And then just brush it back out again. You can fast forward through this part if you know about um, base coating. You could also color wash instead of base coating, which would be um, equal parts of water and paint mixed together. And then you just brush it on and then sponge it off, leaving the dark color, color wash color in your crevices. Um, so you don't have to to actually base coat if you don't want to. It could have been color washed first. So I'm just working my way around him, starting on the bottom and working my way up to the top. And then I will just keep um, turning him until we get him all base coated. And then I go back and look for any white specks. Uh, like around our little wound here now, I have these white specks, so I gotta go back and touch that up. And I just keep turning him and working my way around and brushing my paint out. And I need some more, so I'm going to grab a little bit more. And I'm using a size 8 nylon painting brush. You want to use the brush appropriate to your piece that you're painting. You wouldn't want to use a size 1. It would take you forever um, to base coat it. So you you want to use a little bit bigger brush depending upon the size of your piece or what you're painting. Um, you can also use the natural hair brushes like the Red Sable. Those are great for um, painting as well. Um, they were actually more popular um, in the previous years and now the nylon brushes have become more popular because they're actually more um, reasonable but the um, natural hair sable brushes would be um, actually a great choice. It's just that they do cost more. So I'm just brushing back and forth, working my way from the bottom up, dabbing up and down into my little crevices like where the little um, zigzags are on his shirt. Just working that paint in there so we have no white specks. If you do have white specks, those will show through when you're um, dry brushing and be quite obvious. So you do want to make sure you have all those little fleas. 
which this is just a little nickname we give them because they are pesty like fleas and they don't go away. And you just got to keep painting until you get all your little white specks and spots covered. And you may think you have it covered really well and as soon as it's dry they just appear. So just go back and get another layer and fill them up as now on the bottom of his little pants here I have some showing through even though it's dry and it looked like it was covered before. And brush it out good. And now we're back around to the front and now I can see I have those little white specks, those little fleas are coming through so we want to go back and touch all those little areas up and get rid of them or when we're dry brushing um, they will show up and be very obvious. So you do have to look at your piece from different angles. Look from the bottom down, from the top down, or I should say from the bottom up and the top down. And his little body is looking pretty good here. Now I'm actually going to um, put my fingers in the bottom holes where um, the pore holes are because those are dry now. And I can paint his little face. I need a little more black. And we kind of got to swirl it around his eyes just to get down in there and dab up and down by his nose. And just make sure you keep brushing it out. And getting all those little areas covered good. Um, your base coat can be other colors than black. Um, like even a really dark green might have been a good color for this guy. Or um, if you're doing snowmen, you might want to use like a blue or a purple. And that will be the shade or the hue that kind of shines through your white when you put it, up, put it on then. It just gives them a little extra... Um, character so it does not always have to be black that's kind of personal preference so I'm just brushing back and forth getting my all my little grooves and nooks and crannies filled in with our black and we're just about there And I want to go back and look just to make sure everything's covered. And we'll turn him around again. And now we have the top of his head here to get yet. And now I have some more white specks coming through that we want to come back and get. So they just seem to always appear even though you think you got them all. Especially when you have lots of little um, crevices and nooks and crannies on a piece with lots of detail. It just takes a little more brushing just to get all those little areas covered. So we'll look at his back here and work our way around again. So now we have some coming through here on the back of his head. And a little bit on his pants there. A little behind his ear that the worm chewed off. So if you notice that that is his ear laying on his shoulder because the worm's coming out of his head there. So just in case you didn't catch that. Make sure you get in between his little fingers. And we got some more underneath his little zigzags on his shirt. And we'll turn him around one more time. Look from the top down. We got a spot up here. Okay, he looks pretty good. Bottom's covered good. And so is the rest of him. So now you always want to make sure you wash out your brushes really well. So we have our Harold's brush pad cleaner in here. And you just gently brush back and forth on that with your brush. Um, turn it a little bit and then 
brush back and forth again and you can see that just gets all that paint out of your brush really nice and then I like to dab them on my paper towel and then I'll put that aside to dry so number two on our um, instructions sheet says to dry brush Lexington green on the skin areas um, so the reason I'm doing that is that um, it's some of it's the lower area like the toes are lower than the pants um, the face is lower than the worm and lower than the hair so if we did the hair first and then did the green our green would get onto our hair and onto our worm and onto his pants um, his arm is lower than the shirt sleeve if you're looking at that in a step um, so we would do the I'm doing the arms the skin colors first now I can see I have some little specks coming through here of my white again so I got to grab a little more black otherwise those will show through when we're dry after we're done dry brushing um, so he's got a lot of little um, crevices and things so that does take a little more brushing and going back and checking it after it's dried to make sure you have all those areas covered with the black okay now he looks pretty good and again I'll wash that brush out dab it dry on my paper towel and set it aside to dry um, so now our number two again was our Lexington Green so I have Doc Holiday DH26 Lexington Green and we want to give that a little shake and we want to put a puddle on our palette whether it's a tile or a styrofoam sheet or the foil um, so I kind of need him to dry here a little bit. So it's raining here today and it's damp, so it might take a little bit longer for stuff to dry. But we can start on this arm. So now when I'm looking at him and to determine what size brush, um, we, we have kind of small areas. Um, so I wouldn't want to use this big size 8 brush. So I'm going to go with a smaller um, brush, either a 3 or a 5. Um, even the five might be a little bit big because um, that's a lot of brush for those little areas. Um, so I am going to go with the size three, and I'm going with my flat, and it's a nylon. Or it's not a nylon. It's a boar bristle brush, which is a natural hair brush, and it's a little bit stiffer than the nylon. And those work really great for dry brushing. So now I have my green on my foil, and I'm just going to touch the edge of it with my brush and I have a flat one it doesn't matter if you use flat or um, round so I am using a number three um, flat and then I brush it out on my paper towel so there's barely any green coming out and now I can brush across my textures on my toes here so these are his little toes sticking out of his shoes so you want to brush across it and um, actually we kind of got different directions here with the toe so I can go different directions you want to avoid filling in the crevices with your green you want to leave those black so again I grab a little more of my Lexington green and brush it out and come back to my toes and just brush across our texture so now we'll come to his hand over here and we want to brush across his fingers. We don't want to go up and down because that would fill in those crevices. Um, so it's important to try to brush across your textures and crevices. Um, we, we are going to brush across his arm onto his pants and his shirt. We're not going to worry about getting the green onto the pants and the shirt because the next color will, um, their colors will cover them that up, the green up. But we're basically focusing on getting our green on our skin and basically brushing across those textures which are the lines um, the crevices going around the fingers and where the arm and the shirt meet and the pants and we want to leave that black down in those crevices because that's what's going to give our piece its shading so now I need to turn him and again, I'm just going to go up and down at the very top of his arm onto the shirt. And now I have to go 
um, from side to side where the arm is alongside the shirt. And the same with the pants. If I go up and down, I'm going to fill in that black crevice there, which is our shading, and we don't want to do that. So I grabbed some more green, and again, I'm just brushing across his fingers. Um, you're basically covering the majority of the black on that arm and only leaving the black down in the crevices. Um, I know that's a hard um, thing to learn as to how much black to leave. Um, I used to leave a lot in the whole arm part, but it's really just on those in those crevices where you're leaving your black. And then our three shades of green are actually going to give us our um, shading um, on the arm itself. So on the top here, part of his hand, thumb, I can go um, either direction. It doesn't matter. There's really no crevice there. But where the arm's meeting the shirt and the pants, I want to go across it. So that little arm is done. And then I'll go back and look at his little toes because now those are dry. So I can give them another little coat just to bring out that green a little more. And now we can go to his other hand, and again, we're just brushing back and forth across the texture. Now where I get to his sleeve, I'm going to go up and down so that I'm leaving that black in that zigzag part. So you do have to change the direction of your brush depending upon where your creases and crevices are on your piece that you're dry brushing. And you just got to keep changing his little direction as you're going. So again, I'm going across where the shirt and the arm meet instead of going with it because then that would fill in that black area that actually is giving us our shading. And that's a little shiny, so that tells me my brush is a little wet, so I'm going to brush that out a little more. So that's more of a wet brushing than a dry brushing. And we want to really be doing dry brushing to build up the color nice in, in thin layers. We're going to go across his little hands here, his little fingers, leading the black down in the crevices. And work our way right up the arm and to the shirt. And you can leave as much or little of the black in the crevice that you want. And we'll come back to that. So now his little face is fairly dry. Um, so we're going to, again, go across our textures. So I'm going up and down where the face and the shirt meet. And then his little ear is on his shoulder, so we want to make sure we get that in green as well. And we'll work around the worm here. And it's okay if you get the green on the worm, because the brown later will cover that up. Going up and down where the front of the or the back of the shirt meets the neckline, kind of across the hair. And just keep working your way around. And we'll get over his ear. Again, across his hair. And right around to the front of his face. Um, it doesn't matter if you get the eyeballs covered up or not. That's okay. We'll be painting those later. And you almost have to get the green on them just to get the green around him. And if you want to turn your brush on its side and actually go kind of with um, with the direction of your crevices here where his hair goes so that you don't have too much black showing through. So there are exceptions where you may go with your um, crevices instead of against them. It all depends how much you want black showing through.
keep working around, get our ear all green. Get the back of his head green. Don't worry about getting it on the worm, that's okay. So you can see if we had done our hair first, that would be all full of green. Um, so since the skin is deeper than the hair or lower than the hair, that's why we're doing our green first. And we'll go back and look if we want another layer on our arm. And I can see some black through there yet, so I'm going to just give another little layer. But I do want the black down in all the crevices. And I'm brushing fairly lightly. I'm not bearing down hard and beating the brush on the piece. Um, you don't need to brush real hard to build up that color. And they go try to get a little bit down in his eyes here yet. So they're not quite as dark around the outside. And maybe a little more across his mouth. And around our little worm there. And on the ear. And then I'm just making sure that it's the same shade and coverage all the way around on the head so it's nice and even. And we'll get this arm a little bit extra too. Get his fingertips on the end. Okay, so we have our Lexington green on there, and I, you can see it doesn't take much. I had way too much out. So our next color is our leaf green. Actually, I actually went right to the lime burst, so we can go right to the lime burst with this one. Um, so I have our Mako lime burst, SS376. Um, I kind of wanted him more bright, bright instead of such the gradual change there, so we'll use a little pile of our lime burst. And I'm going to use my same dirty brush and just tip in, dip in the edge of it. And that'll give us a nice gradual change of color. Brush it out. And now we'll start on his toes. And I need a new paper towel because that one's wet. And we'll grab some lime burst and work it out. And now we can brush across this toe, come back to our other toes, grab a little bit and brush it out. And again, we'll do the same sequence as before from one hand to the next, going across my textures and just building up my color. Several um, thin layers are better than one heavy wet layer. Again, I'm just brushing across my textures of my fingers. I'm not going with them. Same with the shirt and the pants. You're going across it, leaving that black down in that crevice. And then also some of the Lexington green, which gives you your shading from your black to your Lexington green to your lime burst. And now we'll let that arm dry and we'll go to the next one. Again, brushing across those fingers. Across the arm and across the pants. And across the arm and across the shirt, leaving our black and then some Lexington green. And then we have our lime burst. So we have those layers of shading, which gives your piece lots of shape and dimension. Grab some more and you just keep, so that's real wet looking, so I'm brushing out my brush. I don't want it to be that wet looking. I want it to be drier looking when it goes on. So sometimes I get trying to rush so this doesn't take too long and I end up with too much of a, too wet of a brush or I'm talking too much and it's too wet. Um, so you just have to brush it out then and Brush it out on the paper towel and then try to come back and even it out. But I'm still going across all my textures and crevices here. 
I mean, really, there, there's not really that much texture on the arm. It's just those crevices in between the fingers and between the arm and the shirt and the pants. So you want to make sure you brush that brush out after you grab that little bit of paint. Um, you're not grabbing much paint at all, just enough to dampen it. And then you're brushing it out to a dry brush and then you're dry brushing onto your piece. So there we have that arm done. So now we'll come back and give our little toes another little layer and build that up because they're dry. And now we can go to our other arm. And again, we're going to go across the fingers, across the fingers and, and onto the pants. So we're not going with the texture. We're going against it or across it. Brush out your brush. And just keep lightly brushing and building up your color in nice thin layers. And that will give your piece a nice um, soft look to it. So that was kind of heavy, so I brushed it out. It's still kind of heavy. So just brush it out. I'm brushing fairly lightly. I'm not brushing hard. And that color just goes right on there and keeps building up. And you can see we're getting nice shading. We have our black and then our Lexington green and now the lime burst. Um, so not going with the leaf green kind of gives us more of that limey, limey green color. And I thought since he's a zombie, I kind of wanted him more limey green. So I'm going across the tips of his fingers here. Letting that nice shading down inside between the fingers. And we'll come back and do some more here. Now you can see there's a lot of black coming through the main part of the arm and the hands, but we're going to slowly build that up. Um, so we'll let this arm dry just like we're letting the other ones dry, and we'll come back to it. And now we'll go to his head. And we're going to do the same thing we did before, just brush up and down across the back of the neck onto the shirt. And that lets that nice dark outline, which just gives you your piece all that nice shading that it needs. And up here where the hair stripes are, I kind of do go with it a little bit. Um, just to get, it's just easier to get that color in there so there's not too much black. So you can go up and down if it's... Um, or with your texture, depending upon what you're trying to achieve. And we'll go back and forth, go across his little ear here. And I'm going to actually go with my um, grooves here, just because I want a little more color in there. And not so much black. And then we'll come back and go across as well. And we'll just keep turning him and working our way around. So we hope you guys enjoy the um, pre-recorded videos. You'll have to let us know what you're, if they're of value to you and you're using them. You can message us or comment in the BizBox group. If you like that better than maybe waiting for the lives, let us know. Or if you don't like them, let us know that too, I guess. So I'm just brushing back and forth on his little face here and building up our lime green. Trying to go across my um, different textures here. It's okay if you get it on the shirt and on the worm and on the hair. Um, the, other, the colors of those will um, basically cover that green up or we can't even go back and um, add some black to it if we need to. Um, don't forget to get the lime green on the shoulder, his ear that's on his shoulder. So we're just going to keep building up our lime burst here. And you can have him as bright or um, dark green as you'd like him. I actually had mine fairly limey. So I still have a lot of black coming through, or the Lexington green coming through, so we're going to 
Um, add a few more coats and just keep building it up. Well, coming around the side. Anytime you think your brush has too much, just brush it out on your paper, paper towel or paper plate or coffee filter or brown bag, whatever it is you're using. And just keep changing your direction of your brush as you're going to the be going across your crevices. So we're just slowly building up our colors here. You can see our dark colors are staying down in our crevices. And I need some more of our lime burst. And we'll come back to his little toes here and get them some more. So you can see you just keep building up those colors and as they dry it just keeps sticking better. And we'll get some more on his arms here. And I'm just going back and forth across it. Cross the fingers. And you do have to keep turning them to get to the fingertips and the back. And keep grabbing your lime burst and brushing it out. Brush it back and forth across the arm and the shirt. And we just keep building up our lime burst here. And you can see we have our black down in there, then we have our Lexington green, and now we have our lime burst. So he still looks fairly speckly on the main part of his arm, so I do want more lime burst on there yet. So just build that up a little bit more through the main high areas. And let it fade away as it's going away from the center. And we'll go to the other arm and just do the same thing. Just keep brushing back and forth, building up that line burst. Cross the fingers. Turn him so you can get to the fingertips. And then across the fingers on the front. So dry brushing is kind of a slow process because you do have to just keep building up those colors nice and slow. Um, you don't want to get it too wet at one time because then the paint's not going to stick to as well. You could get what almost appears to be like a hot spot where it just doesn't want to stick if you're too wet. The best thing is then is to move on to another area and let that dry really, really well. And you may have to come back and dab the paint in that particular spot then to get it to stick. I'm just going to get a little more on the main part of his arm here. And then we can go to his little head. So I kind of have a rhythm to it, I guess you could say. I start in one area and work to the next. Um, let that previous area dry while you're working on the next area and then just keep um, working your way around. If you kind of have the same pattern that you do each time, then you'll always know um, where you've been and where you're, where you're headed to. So I wouldn't want to do some area here and then switch them and do the back and then come back, back to the front. I kind of work my way from one side all the way around. Um, that way you kind of have a, a like a pattern or a rhythm to it. So we're going to get his face a little bit brighter here yet. So I can see a lot of the... Um, black and the Lexington green through there and I just want that down in the shadows really 
with the main high spots being more solid Lexington or the main Mako Lime Burst. And just brush him back and forth across to all those different little textures and grooves that are in his face. And you can turn him different angles because now I can get a little more of my lime burst underneath his chin so it's not quite as dark under there. So it kind of like the moon is like glowing on him. And I need a little more paint. So I like to put a drop at a time so I'm not wasting it because I can always add more um, than to try to put it back in the bottle. Just building up his little lime green here. And we'll just keep turning him. And that's very wet, so I gotta brush that out. You can actually wipe it. You can see I got a lot of it off of the worm because it was so wet. And grab a little more and brush it out. Kind of work that lime burst up in between his um, hair spears that he's got hanging around here. And just keep turning him. And going across your texture. And I do kind of go the same direction on his head here just to get it worked in there a little bit more because I don't want a whole lot of black up there. And across the neck and the shirt. And we're actually right back around. So now this front is kind of dried and I think we're going to do one more layer yet and then I think we can move on. Because I'm seeing a lot of the dark colors through my lime burst yet and I want just a little bit less. Less. So we'll mainly focus on the high areas. So you can see we have our black and then we have our Lexington green and then our lime burst so we got nice shading going on. Turn him here and get the bottom and the back. And we'll do the other arm. I just wanted to get rid of a little bit more of the dark color that's coming through my lime burst. Which is mainly the high areas because we're letting the, the shading with the Lexington green and the black as it goes away from the high areas. And I need another little drop because we just got his face left. So this is dried now while we were working on the other areas, so it'll take another little layer of paint here easily. Just a nice, light, quick coat. Just making him look a little um, like he's radioactive, I guess you could say. So just working our way around. Brushing up and down across those textures, working it up in between the hair. Okay, so we're right back around, and I'm pretty satisfied with him. So he's looking pretty limey here. Okay, so we'll set our green brush aside, because we may have to come back and touch up. So now we are going to number four. We're going to use a little bit of lemon peel to highlight the high areas. And 
let's see, I didn't pull them and peel, so give me a second. That's pale yellow. So I have our Duncan OS434 lemon peel, and we're just gonna need a drop of that. And I'm gonna take my same lime burst brush and just dab it in my lemon peel and brush it out. And do that a few times, it'll get that lemon lemony color in there so we can get a little bit of brightness on our um, guy. So we're just gonna highlight the top of his toes by brushing across. And then across the top of his hand here where the light would be hitting him more. And the top of his um, arm and forearm. Just where the light would be hitting it more. So we're not trying to get it next to his body, we're trying to get it just on this high part. So we'll even turn him and just get a little bit, working it around the corner, on the back of the arm, but main, mainly on this front, this front sweep right here where the, say the moon would be shining on him and on his hand. And the same with this hand, we'll do it on the fingers and on the forearm. And I grabbed a little bit more and I brushed it out. So we're just gonna get it across his fingers and palm, across his little forearm here. Because most of the light would be hitting it through here and as, as it goes away, there would be less. So we're just gonna come around the corner just a little bit, not all the way. And get just a little bit on the tips of those fingers And then we want a little bit on his face, uh, basically like his nose, his chin, his ears, um, this little ear on his shoulder. Just as though the moon was shining right on there, kind of on his little um, eyebrow area here. Just the, just the high spots where the, the light would be hitting it the most, kind of on the cheeks and the chin, onto this other ear on top. So if, if you have trouble understanding the light part, you could go in the dark and get yourself a flashlight and shine it onto the piece and then you would see where the light would be hitting it the, the brightest and that's where you would want to highlight it. So we highlight it on his nose, his little eyebrow area here, his chin, upper and lower on the ear, on um, this ear that's on the shoulder. Um, we'll put a little bit on the top of his head up here and I am going with um, the texture or the, with, with the crevices instead of across it. Um, I'm not going to come all the way down because the back of his head would be shading um, that lower area there, but I do want it up here on the top and then kind of onto the back of that ear and then less as you get down further. But more up on top because the Light would be hitting it up there more and then less as you come down. And again, more up here on top and less as you come down. So that just gives that effect that the light is really hitting and shining on there. Um, we'll get a little more on the top of that arm, a little more on the toes and a little more on this arm, a little bit on this cheek here and that ear, a little more on the other ear so there he is, he's all greened up for us. We'll put that brush aside. Um, so now we are on number five, dark brush navy on the pants. Okay, so our next color is navy, Duncan. Duncan navy, OS 460 navy. Give it a little shake. Um, get yourself a little pile. Um, another brush, I'd probably go with the same size three again. Um, I'll just go with a round this time, just to show you, you can use a round or a um, flat one. We're gonna go with the round. I'm going to touch the edge of my navy and brush it out on my paper towel. And you can see you have a whole lot at first and then less and less, and that's the point where you're, um, you're good to go with your painting on your piece. So again, I'm brushing across 
the texture where the pants and the shirt meet and then where the two pants legs meet I need to change the direction of my brush so you're always changing the direction of your brush and then kind of up and down where it goes across the shoe then it's okay if it gets on the shoe the brown will cover that up later um, same with over here by the worm that's in his little um, knee cap area we'll just go across across it and across the bottom here even onto this shoe um, where our shirt meets our pants we're just going to go up and down don't worry about that green that navy will build that up and cover that up um, so now where we have our hand and our pants meeting you do have to be a little more careful because you don't want to have to redo your um, arm there again so I just do little strokes and I start away and work it towards my black and I can see right where my um, navy is going and then I know to leave I always want that little bit of black left down in that crevice and I'm just doing little bitty strokes so that I can control where that blue is going Say all the way around his hand you want to do that so just grab your little blade of navy, brush it out, start away from your hand and slowly work towards it and you can cover up that green that's on your navy on your pants without getting your um, hand all full of green. And then I usually go back and brush where I already started with the navy because that's gradually drying so And we're just going to go up and down here across our legs and the top of our shirt. And we'll come back to the hand area here because that's dried a little bit. Now I can start away again and nudge up towards it. Start away, nudge towards it. That way you can see right where your blue is going. And we'll just keep turning him. And working our blue away and up towards it and where the shoe and the pants meet you can just go ahead and brush up and down you got plenty of room there to do that um, we can brush up and down alongside the arm here till we get kind of close to it I'll bring it right up over the shirt and again I'm just grabbing my navy and brushing up and down Leaving that black where the zigzag is, where the shirt meets the pants. Going left to right where the pants leg meets the other pants leg. And then we kind of have some ripples in the knees area. So I am going up and down instead of um, across. But I'll try to go across to where the legs are meeting underneath that. So you just got to keep changing your brush direction. Kind of looking at where the creases are. Just keep brushing up and down here, bring it right up to the hand, right down to the shoes. I'll come back to the middle and go right up the middle of his legs. And now we got to come back where our arm is over here. Get that green covered up so I start away. And I'm just doing little half circle strokes or C strokes and I start away from the arm and I work towards it and I can see right where my blue is going and I know to stop when I get close to the arm but yet leaving some of the black. So we want that black there for our shading for our shadows and I just bring it right up onto his shirt. And if you want to get a little closer, you can actually kind of brush with, with the line, the crevice. Um, but you still do want to make sure you leave some black there. You don't want it completely blue. And we'll come back and forth across the bottom of his shirt again just to build that up a little more. And the rest of his pants legs. And we'll just keep working our way around.
Well, we have the bottom of the pants done all the way around, but we have this other arm again, so we're going to start away um, from that arm. Just do little strokes and nudge yourself um, towards the arm, leaving the black right where the arm and the pants meet and the hand meet. So you just have to take little strokes and use a smaller brush when you have little detailed areas like that. If you were using a, a big old brush, like a 10 um, or an 8, you would not be able to control where that that is because it would be taking up a big area and, and we're just trying to get paint in the little area. So you have to use a smaller brush um, when you're trying to get paint in a little area and not a big brush that's going to get paint everywhere. So again, I'm just starting away from my hand and nudging my way up to it. I can see where that wet paint is going on and I can still leave my... Um, black in that um, crevice there. So we got a nice layer of navy. We've actually worked our way all the way around and we're going to give him one more layer because I can still see black um, through my navy going across where the two legs meet instead of with them and across where the shirt and the pants meet. And we'll have to do our little strokes over here to get this rest of this green covered up. And I just start away from the arm and nudge my way to it. You can right, see right where that wet paint is. And you can just keep getting closer and closer until you're right where you need to be. It's okay if your worm gets awful of navy. That's not going to hurt nothing. The brown will cover that up. So we just keep working our way around the back. And I can see my green through my navy. So we're just going to start away from it. And just nudge closer and closer to the arm until it's... Right where that black is, there's probably about an eighth of an inch of black between the arm and the pants, and you want that there for the shading. So that's already got that all worked up. Grab just another drop of navy because we got a little further to go. Brush it out. And we'll go back and forth across all our textures here on the back. You just want a nice even coat. You don't want a lot of black in one area and a lot of blue in the other area. You want the equal amount of navy all the way around. So we're back over by this um, other arm and where the shirt meets. So we got to do those little strokes and just work that navy in, in there slow. Start away from it and work towards it. Start away and work towards it. Start away and work towards it. And we'll just keep coming right around around. Start away and go towards the hand. Just little half strokes like a C stroke. And we'll get our pants in a little bit more here. I can see green on the pants. Okay, so we have our pants all covered with our navy. So our next number is our number five. And now we're going to put medium blue on there to highlight. So I have my Duncan OS457 medium blue. So I kind of wanted these to look like blue jeans on him. So we just need a drop of our medium blue. And I'm going to use my same dirty brush and a new piece of paper towel. Touch the edge of my brush into that medium blue a couple times and brush it out and work it in there. Brush it out real good. Um, so now we want him to just kind of have the blue jean look. So I may, mainly did his um, knees. I want to make sure I got it brushed out here good. And I, I kind of did the whole pants, just a very light shade of the medium blue. With the most of it on the knees and then the bottom where they're frayed. So we'll get a nice layer all the way around, but barely there, medium blue, and more along the bottom. So we'll just work this kind of one even layer of medium blue, but it's medium blue that's barely there, just to give that blue jean look. And I'm just brushing really, really lightly just to get a really light layer of the medium blue. And we're 
coming right around to the back. Just brush real light just to get the barely there medium blue. And that kind of gives your pants a blue jean look. And if you go real light, you won't have much for brush stroke. So you won't be able to see that your brush strokes are going in a certain direction. So I'm just barely touching it and getting that medium blue on there. And I'm still going across my texture just like we did before. And I kind of change directions too and give it, um, just gives it more of an even look to it. And we kind of worked our way around. So now our navy has just a touch of that medium blue over the top of it. And that's giving that blue jean look. But now we want to make them look like they're worn blue jeans. So we're going to get some more medium blue. And we're going to focus on his knees and the edge of the zigzags here so they look like they're kind of worn and frayed and kind of been abused. So I'm just going kind of going with the texture across those Z's working my way. So I wanted heavier medium blue at the bottom and less as I work my way up but I'm brushing really light so I can control that. Starting at the bottom and kind of getting lighter as you go up and heavier at the bottom and then we'll do the other leg the same way grab that light blue medium blue and brush it out go across those zigzags on the bottom and then kind of come up with less light medium blue up up so it's Stronger at the bottom and less as it go up, goes up, so they would have like a faded out effect on there. And we're back around. Grab a little medium blue and brush it out. Go across his zigzags on the other leg here. And have it stronger at the bottom and less as it goes up. And we'll get a little bit on the other one here. Now we want to get those knees like they are all worn out. Like blue jeans tend to get those worn out knees. And we'll do the same around our worm here. So it's stronger in the center and then less as it goes out. So strong in the center and then less as it goes out. And that just gives our blue jeans a worn out look to them. And we'll get a little more on the bottom. Just look like he's been dragging them through the dirt. Got them all frayed and thinned. And we can get a little bit on his um, bottom here so it looks like he wore out the seat so just gently brushing that going around and around or back and forth so it looks like he's been sitting a lot and wore the bottom of his pants out and we got this little ripple here so we'll just give that a little highlight so we'll come back around and get that on those edges here a little bit more and on those knees a little bit more so now we have our blue jean looking pants with our frayed edges so our next step is to do his shirt and for his shirt we are now on number six so we are going to use our Duncan OS 453 grape. 
And I'm gonna give that a little shake. And we're gonna get us a little puddle of that. And again, I don't want a really huge brush because I would have purple all over my arms and face. Um, so we're gonna go with our size three again, and I'm gonna use a flat one. I'm just gonna drip into my grape and brush it out. I did change brushes. I didn't go with the blue. I could have went with the blue, but I'm I'm just gonna switch to a clean, nice clean brush. So again, we want to brush across any of our textures and crevices. So I'm brushing across his um, sleeve to the shirt. And we can, um, got to be careful when we're on this one sleeve by his little ear. So we're going to start away from it. Make those little C strokes and just nudge up to it. And you can see right where your purple is, leaving just a little bit of black there. And we'll have to do the same thing when we get to his um, neckline. We can kind of brush across that and not get his chin all full of it if you're real careful. Um, and just bring that right around. And we'll nudge right up to his head. So now I can go back and forth across his arm here where the arm and the shirt meet. And I can make nice big back and forth across the middle of his shirt because I don't have to worry about getting purple anywhere other than on the shirt where it belongs. And we're down to the um, ziggy part of the bottom of the shirt. So I'm actually going to turn him around and brush back and forth. And then um, I actually am using the, like the side of the brush instead of brushing the width of it. I'm brushing the thin part of it. So I can take it right to the edge of my point, down to my pants without getting my pants all full of the purple. And then I can start coming up along the arm. I start away from it and just slowly make those little C strokes right up to my arm, leaving a little bit of black. I don't want to do big back and forth strokes because then I would have his whole arm full of purple. And then we'd have to redo it. So we're just going to make these little strokes and nudge them from starting away and then work up to it. And we can do the same thing on his arm here where the little ziggies are. I'm, I'm not going the wide way. I'm going the narrow way with my flat brush. So I can just get it onto those tips of those points. And I'm not brushing big, wide, wide. Um, I, I can do this wide part on the middle of the arm but as I get down here to where the little ziggies are I'm turning my brush on its side and just gently going and slowly going across the ziggies till I get to the tip of the ziggy without getting my arm all full of purple. So you just have to go slow and careful when you have those little more um, those little areas like that. So now I have this big open area here. I can make my nice big strokes back and forth. And then we can come back to his front to make sure we get that all done. And we'll finish getting the middle here full of our grape. And then I can turn him and do the same with this, this arm as the other one, I start away from it and just make those little, it's just a C stroke and just slowly work up to the arm, leaving the black between the arm and the shirt. Um, but if you just make those little strokes, you can see where your paint is going because it has a little bit of a wet look compared to the rest of it. So again, we're gonna turn him a little bit. We can go across our points on this sleeve just like the other one, I'm just going real gentle, real slow, brushing out my grape, start away from the edge, and slowly work to the point. And just do little strokes, that way you won't get it all over your arm. And then you can do your bigger, wider strokes on the main part of the sleeve. Um, so you can see I have my brush turned, I'm using the whole width of it now. Um, in the middle part of the sleeve until I get to the points. I turned it on its edge again. 
I'm kind of just doing one point at a time, brushing across it. Just with those little strokes, and you can control where that paint's going because you can see it. So now we have the where the shirt and the arm meet. We're going to do the same thing. And I have a nice big area here so I can make these nice big strokes. But now we have our points on our shirt again, so we're going to just start away and work our way down to the point. And that way we're not getting our purple all over his pants, so we have to redo the pants. Um, if you do, you just touch it up. It's not that big of a deal. So now I have this nice big area here. I can brush back and forth. I don't have to worry about getting paint anywhere on anything. And now we're back over here by the other arm, so we got to be careful again. So we'll get our little points that are left here. And you can brush, I'm kind of brushing each one individually. So now i got to turn him because we have to get our little um, purple in down in here. So I have the, the, the arm and the pants, so i got to be really careful. I'm using the edge of my um, brush. If you wanted, you could change, go to a smaller brush at this area. So I'm starting away, working towards his arm, start away, work towards his arm. Start away, work towards his arm, and leaving a little bit of black in that crevice. And now we can come back up on top here. Um, so now we usually say to go across our texture, but we, if we went across our texture where our shirt and our head meet, we'd have our head all full of purple. So I'm going to start back on this shoulder, and I'm going to start away and work my way to the neck. That way I can see where that paint is going without getting his head all full of purple. So I grabbed a little bit, brushed it out. Now I'm brushing on my shirt up to his neck. And I'm just stopping right where the green stops and the, and the black starts. But because I start away, I can see where, that, where it's wet and where that paint is going. And now I know I can stop right there. Same thing, start away and just, just make those little brush marks, strokes, and you can move right up to your line where the black starts. And we'll just work our way all the way around the back of his neck up to his ear. And if you can still see green between the black and the purple, you just got to go back and slowly touch it up carefully and work that purple in there. So now we have. His shirt basically has the whole one layer of our um, purple, so now we're back to the front. Um, so I can still see green through my purple, so I'm just going to start away from it again and work over to the green arm. Start away, just I'm just gently touching his shirt and working towards the arm. Just with little miniature C strokes, that way I can see where my uh, paint is going without getting it all over the green arm. And then when I have a bigger area, I can make my bigger brush strokes and brush it right out. Now I want to get the bottom of his little shirt here again. Just make little strokes till you get to the tip of the points. And we can make our big strokes in the middle because we have the room to do it and we don't have to worry about getting purple on the arm. Bring it right up to his chin. Grab some more and work it out. Now we're going to do our other arm here. Get that another layer because I can see green through it yet. And again, I'd start away from the edge and work towards the edge. And you just have to keep turning him. And slowly working your purple over. Now I got this big area I can brush back and forth. I do want to tip him up. And I want to work my purple under my chin here a little bit. Because I don't want my green coming down onto my shirt. 
And then I want to work my purple up to my ear because I really don't want the green on the sleeve of the shirt or it's going to like look like there's more um, green on there than there should be. And now I can make these big strokes because we got plenty of room. And we got a little area here. We'll got green coming through, so we're just going to do our little strokes. Work it up to his head, right where the black starts. And that's good. So now I can brush this out. Get it through the middle. And we'll just turn him back around. So you do have to just keep turning your piece. You can see all the different directions. So I can see I have green on my um, little points here. So I'm going to just Cover that up with the purple because it, it doesn't look like it belongs there. So we want to cover that up so it's not there. And you just start away and work up to it. And now we're actually right back around. So he's looking good. So you can see I really don't have to touch up my green just because I was, I was careful. I start away from my green and work towards it. And I can see right where that purple's going down. If you would get purple on your green, you just have to go and touch that up when you're done. So now we have our purple all, our great ball on our shirt. So that looks good. So now we can go to our purple, our OS452, and we're just going to highlight our shirt. And we need a little pile of that. And we basically want to have the whole shirt have a coat of the purple really light, and then we'll come back and, and highlight the edges and around the neck. And I'm going to use my same dirty brush, brush it out a couple times. Work that color up in there, and now you can see it's coming out dry. So again, I'm just going to brush very lightly across the grape just to give another color to my shirt so it's got more dimension and isn't just flat looking. Basically giving the whole shirt a light coat of purple. Um, just barely there, kind of a purple. Just like we did kind of with the blue jean color. And we'll work our way around. And then we'll come back and highlight the high areas. So I do have it a little heavier on the arm here, but that's okay because that is one of the high areas. So I just want to, just so there's a light brush of the purple on, on top of the grape. And that's going to bring out the wrinkles in his shirt and just give it more dimension. And you could leave it dark or and just highlight the edges. Um, you could do whatever you want. You could paint stripes on it. You could add polka dots. Um, these are just the colors that I used to paint it just for our samples and Courtney likes purple so I used purple. It, it's really up to whatever you're whatever you want to do. So I'm just getting my light coat of purple all over his um, grape just to give the shirt kind of more um, just gives it more dimension to having the two colors. So going across my texture areas like the arms and where the shirt meets the pants. And up here where the neckline is. So now I have my back of my shirt a little bit lighter than the front so I'm just going to lighten up my front a little more. I tend to get heavy with the color as I go around. So I did get my purple on my arm there, so we're just going to let that there, and we'll come back and cover that up with our green. So I'm just brushing back and forth. You can see that's bringing out the creases in his shirt. Um, so that's kind of why I used the purple to just kind of highlight that, just that little bit over that grape. It just brings out more of the dimensions in the shirt. So now we're actually going to highlight the edges of the shirt all the, and the high sole around here like as though the fabric is frayed and thinned. Same with up here and on his sleeves and we'll have it lighter up here because the 
uh, moon or the light would be hitting the top of those arms more. Um, we'll have underneath the chin here just a little bit lighter, but not a lot lighter because the chin would be shadowing that some. Um, so we'll have it brighter towards the tips of those ziggies because that's like the fabric is thin and maybe only like one layer of thread. And then as it goes out to the shirt, it's going to get darker where there's more layers of thread. And we'll do the same thing with the bottom of the shirt. So as if this is frayed and there's just a few strings of fabric left there so you can kind of see through it and it's light. Um, so we're just going to brush on the tips of our points here. And then we'll just bring it up further towards the middle, but have it gradually get lighter as it, or less of the purple as it gets towards the middle. So there's more purple at the edge and less as you go out away from the edge or into the center. And we'll get his little arm here, kind of doing the same thing. We have these little frays, so we want them to look like there's just a few strands of thread there and you'd be able to see through them and then we'll actually get the top of his shoulders lighter because the moon or the light would be shining on there so we do want that lighter altogether and again on the little fringes on the end here and then less as we get up to the sleeve part. So now we have the bottom of our shirt again, so we want that frayed edges to look like it's thin and not a whole lot of fabric there, just maybe one or two um, thread lines. And then as it gets more solid towards the middle of the shirt where all the threads would be there, then it can have less purple um, so it's not thin like a thin fabric, it's heavier fabric, so then the light wouldn't be shining through it as much. So we have it more purple on the edge and then less as it goes in. And a little bit around the neckline. And now on to the other sleeve. Um, so this guy probably has the most work in him as far as how long he takes to do compared to the other ones. So we're going to get a little more on the back side here and then bring it up. Get some more on the shoulder where the light would be hitting it a lot. And I think a little more around our edge here on the bottom. And a little more around the neck, just to kind of give it some pop. Like, hey, I'm here, I'm been through World War III. I got all this frayed clothing on. And we'll come back around. Again, I'm just getting it stronger purple on the bottom and less as it goes up. Just to give it that thin, thinned out fabric look on the edge. And a little bit up here on his shoulders where the light might be hitting him. And I think a little more here on the front. And a little more around the neck. So there we go, we got that looking pretty good. So what is our next color? Uh, brush purple over the grape to highlight. So we got that. So now we're going to move on to the hair, which is number seven. Dry brush the hair with medium brown. So we have our medium brown here, OS471. So I'm going to grab a good size drop of that because that's going to go on the shoes too. Um, again, we have a smaller little areas up here with the hair. So I'm going to go with a smaller brush. I'm going to use my um, actually, I'm going to go with the flat one, I think, so I can turn it on its edge for the, the narrow air, hair. So I have a size one, and I'm going to dip it in my size 
uh, my medium brown and brush it out. I did change to a new brush because I have a completely different color. Um, so now we want to get his hair brown. I don't even know the green is on it. You can cover it up with the medium brown. And I'm just doing um, strokes on to like his little spear of hair because he's kind of got thin note hair looking like he's kind of rough. Um, so I can take my brown to my edge where the green is kind of covered and then I have my black there down in the crevice. And so we'll do that all the way around his little face. Um, we're gonna, comes right up to the ear here. Um, if you wanted, you could paint that hair black again, but there's really no need to because you can see the um, brown does cover it. And you just kind of let the black down in the crevices there. And we'll kind of work it onto this little string of hair. So normally you are going across those um, textures, but when you have this little, these little skinny areas like this, I'm, I'm just going with, with it. And I'm just being careful not to fill it in. Because um, I do want the green in between his um, hair spears, so it looks like his scalp is showing, like he really had a rough day. We're just gonna build up our medium brown. So I have a little more hair up here so I can kind of go across the textures up here. But again, now on this, he's just got like a little spear of hair hanging here over this ear. So we're just gonna kind of dry brush over that. Kind of letting our black down in those crevices there. So again, we just have these little spears here. So we're just gonna kind of go with them instead of across them just to not get the brown all over the green. Kind of try to make it come to a point there on the end. And you can come back and touch up the green if you get brown on it. Get a little more there. And now we got these little spears over here. So I do think the other um, pieces are probably a little easier than this guy, so you, um, I'd probably suggest not starting with this one, unless you want or someone that likes to get the hardest one done first. We'll get our little hair spears all covered with brown here. I'm just brushing real gentle so I have control of where that paint is going. And I am going with the with the texture line, but I'm still being careful not to fill in the black. I'm really just getting the high spot on the on the hair. Okay, let's see. Did we do our worms with this too? Oh, we used saddle brown on the worms, so and what about our shoes? Let's see. Yep, the hair in the shoes with medium brown. So we have our um, shoes here. So we can, you could leave the bottoms black if you wanted. I did make them brown. So we're just going to brush across that. You want to be careful here by your toes so you're not filling them up with the green. You got to do those little strokes, start away and kind of nudge up to it. Make sure there's no green on the shoe part because it'll look like it um, don't belong there. And we'll come right up on top here. And the same where the shoe and the pants meet, you kind of have to start away and nudge up to it and just leave that um, little bit of black down in there. You don't want to be doing these big strokes up and down across it because then you're going to have brown all over your pants and you will have to come back and touch that up. So you're just going to work your way around him around those shoes, around the toes. So I just start away and I can nudge it right up to where that toe is. I can see right where that green should end. And we'll come back to the top here and nudge it up to the pants. And 
and then just work our way around. I'm just slowly working around with the medium brown onto the shoes, kind of getting it up into the, the little zigzags there. And then I do want to go right onto my bottom. I want my bottoms to always look good. Like I said, you could let those soles black if you wanted. That wouldn't hurt any. I kind of just did the whole thing with brown. And then we'll do the other side here. You can actually do all four pieces together and just do the colors on, go from one to the other and um, let them dry on the other one. That kind of helps with the paint sticking easier as well. Rather than doing one piece at a time, it's kind of up to you how you prefer to paint. Um, I would probably tend to do a couple of these at the same time, though the same one. Um, it just is a little bit more effective time efficient for me. So it kind of depends what you're doing. I'm just going to get our brown on our shoes. Make sure you get in the bottom like we're getting the bottom so if someone picks it up the bottom looks nice nice as well as the top. That's especially important if you have um, 4 H'ers because the judges are going to look at that. So I know I just went back on the first shoe because that's kind of dried now. And I can add another layer and I'll just work my way around on the other shoe here and into those points where the pants are all zigzaggy. And we're right around to the front again. We'll get another layer on here. And you just work your way back around. I'm letting the black down in the crevice between the sole and the top of the shoe. Working the brown up to the pants. And around the toes, we wanna to keep the toes green. So you do need to use a littler brush. You wouldn't want to use a big old brush like an eight because then you, you'd you have paint everywhere. And so if you can use about a size one for those little areas, that's a lot better. Kind of want to have your brush fit your space. So I'm just going to work right around here. You can see we're just, you know, just take your time and use that little brush and um, I did get a little brown on my pants there, but I can wipe it right off because they're already dry. And I'm going to turn him around just so I can bring my brown up to that toe underneath the edge of those pants there. Otherwise, it looks like it's on the pants and it doesn't belong there. And it's just those little strokes will do that for you. You just got to be patient and... Work your way around, and then work your way back around. So now we've worked our way back around, and I think we have to go around the back here for our second coat, and then I think he's probably going to be pretty good with his sh shoe color. Well, that looks pretty good. That looks nice and good coverage. We don't have any navy on the shoes. We don't have any green on the shoes. And now we'll go back and look at his hair. And it looks like he needs just a little more. Make sure we don't have green on the hair where it looks like there should be hair. Okay, so now we got that. 
So what is our next number? Dry brush the hair and highlight with light brown. So now we need to get our light brown. So we have our OS467 light brown and we're just gonna need a drop of it. A little drop because we're just highlighting that little area that we just did. So I'm gonna use my same brush, dip in my light brown and brush it out. Um, so that was our light brown OS467. Brush that out really well and now I just wanna highlight his hair just a little bit so the light's kind of shining on him. So I am kind of brushing across my little textures here because I'm just um, not trying to get a lot of paint on there, just a nice little highlight. And we'll come across these, those little bangs that are over there looking like he really had a rough day. And a little bit more on the top of his head because that's where the moonlight or the light would really be shining. And we'll come back the other way. Just so we don't have brush marks. And then we can get a little bit on the back of his shoes here. And a little bit on the top of his shoes because the light would be hitting the top of those shoes. Just brush lightly on the top of the toes, where the toes are on the shoes, rather. So it's kind of where the light would be hitting it. Okay. So our next number is number eight. We're going to dry brush our worms, Saddle Brown. And I don't think I grabbed Saddle Brown, so let me get some Saddle Brown here. Saddle Brown. So we have OS489 Saddle Brown. And it's just going to take a little drop of that. And I'm actually going to change to a round um, number one. I think I can get a better point um, with that. So I'm going to go to a new paper towel. And I dipped my one round in my Saddle Brown just so I can get more of a little point. And we're just going to dry brush our little worm. Uh, worms, both worms, saddle brown, and I'm just touching the edges really, working out from the center out to his little edge of his edge of him. Making sure I don't have any blue on him. Grab a little more and go to the other one here. Um, so the other one's coming out of his ear that he chewed off. We'll just do little dabs till we can get his worm covered and not get the all of our green covered with brown. So again, I'm just starting away and nudging out to the edge, to that outside edge of that worm. And if you have green onto a, the raised area part of the worm, you got to go a little bit further, right to where the worm meets the head. And we'll go back and get another layer on this first one. And then we can come back and get a little more on the second one. You can see a nice little brush, you can get that little area. Okay, so we got our warm wood saddle brown, and we're gonna highlight using light brown. So I'm actually gonna go back to my little brush that had the light brown in it, the one flat. Um, just give him a little highlight, kind of bring attention to him. So he doesn't look so flat. And that's a little much, so we're going to come back with our saddle brown and just do one little coat right over the top of it, and it'll still be lighter than the saddle brown that was originally under it. Okay, now next is add the black dots to his face. 
So let's see. We'll get a little black, which is our OS476. I'm going to take a little brush, my um, 595-50 liner, and I'm just going to dip into my black. And we'll give our little worm a eyes and a mouth. And when you're doing that, you want to rest your holding hand on the table and your painting hand on your piece. So we'll give both eyes a little, just a little more depth to them with the little dots. And we'll wash out our brush. And so now we're going to dry brush rust into our wounds. So I have our Doc Holiday DH28 rust. And we just need a little bit because we don't have a lot. Um, I'm actually going to, let me see, I'll go to my other number one um, flat brush. Grab some rust because it's kind of a change of color. So now he has a wound um, on his arm and on his a um, little chin here, so we're just going to dry brush rust into that. Um, because we're going to be putting red on it, and rust just kind of helps that red color come through quicker. And we got a little chin spot up here, and then if you want some more, like I had some around his eye here, like he got poked in the eye, we'll put some there. And then I also put some, like there's blood running out of his ear from that worm. So I put it down kind of the side of his face and onto the worm, onto the ear, I'm sorry. And we'll come back and touch it up again. And then I actually did a little bit coming out of the knee as well. So we're just dabbing a little bit of rust in there. And from there we can go to our real red. So I have our OS 483 Duncan Real Red, um, OS 483 Duncan Real Wet Red, and we'll just need a little drop of that. Um, like less, it's just a good size drop. It's not, it's not a lot. I'm going to take my same rust brush and dip it into my Real Red and brush it out. And now wherever I put the rust, I'm going to dab my red on there so it looks like he's got blood all over the place. Um, coming out of the ear here and onto the ear. And that's just going right over the rust. And a little bit in the knee. And we'll just come back and do one more coat of the red so it's nice and bloody looking. Okay, so what's next? Now we're going to paint our eyes black. So I'm going to go back to my um, Fibo liner and I'm going to dab into my black and we're actually just going to paint um, the eyes black. Get the other one black. So this was the liner that was our gift in our our anniversary gift to our subscribers in our July box. So we have our little eyes painted black and I'm going to wash that out. And now we need to go to our white. Um, so I have our Duncan OS 431 white. And we'll need a little drop of that. And that's not coming out. Take the top off. And get a little dot. We, we don't need much. And as long as our black is drying, I'm going to get some medium blue. Um, so I have our OS457 medium blue, our Duncan medium blue, and we need just a little drop of that. We need our little eyes to dry here. So it's raining here today, so stuff isn't drying really quick. Oh darn, I lost my little 
liner. Hold on. Where did he go? Okay, so I have my my 5 liner again, my 595 liner. Just waiting for these little eyes to dry because we don't want our white and black to smear. We're almost done. We just got to get his eyes and then our seal them and then get our gloss sealer on. So let's see, I did get purple on my green there, so I'm going to go back and get a little bit of lime burst while we're waiting for those eyes to dry. And I'm just using my green brush. And I'm just going to gently touch that, and that will cover up my purple that I got on my green. So you can go back and touch um, colors up if you get them where you don't want them. Um, I think that was the only place. Well, we could do it on the back of his head here, too, while the um, black is drying. So I can see my brown is actually on the flat part of his head, and that makes it look like it don't go there. So I'm just going to dry brush right alongside of it up to the brown. And that will cover that up so it doesn't look like it's just over painted out of the lines. So that's how you can get your nice um, points on your um, hair. Just come back and touch it up. So that looks pretty good. A little bit on the tip of his ear here. You can just run that green right along each point and that'll give him pointed hair. And we got a little bit up here on the top of his head where the brown is on the green. So we'll just run that along there. And maybe the tip of the ear there. That looks pretty good. So now we'll put that away. So this eye is dry. So we're going to, I'm actually going to dip into my water and make my white just a little bit of inkier than. Um, as thick as it is when it comes out of the bottle so it's easier to paint. So I want his whole outside um, of the eye white and then just the center with some blue and black. Um, so he doesn't have our typical eye because he's looking like he's kind of zoned out here and don't know where he's going or where he's from. We'll just get that with white and letting a black ring around the outside. So it's kind of a pretty simple eye compared to the usual eye because he's just looking all buggy eyed. So again, I'm resting my holding hand on the table and I'm resting my painting hand on my piece. I have my fourth finger um, resting right on him and I can still turn him and move him. And we'll just even this out. And it's okay if we don't get the center because that's going to have the blue and the black. We're just worried about where our white and black are meeting around the outside. And we can do the other eye on the same way. You do just want to make sure that they're dry so your black and white doesn't smear and make gray. Um, this is a nice little liner brush. It's not the script liner, um, but it has a nice, um, seems to keep its point really nice and i um, been really happy with them. So they were the gift in our anniversary box. I hope you guys are finding them useful. You can also order them on brendasbrushstrokesandbiss.com. We're going to come back and put another coat of our white over this eye just to give it a little bit better coverage and not see the black through it. And we'll do the same with the other one. I'm going to let a little bit of black coming through just because he looks like he's just all spaced out and I'm going to wash out my brush and now we're going to go into the medium blue and give us a medium blue center for each one. It's probably just over a little than a quarter inch round circle and we'll do that for both eyes.
just a nice little circle. It looks like he's all crazy. And we'll wash out our brush. And we'll go to our black. And we'll give us a nice black center with both of them. And I'm kind of trying to make them both the same size. So I will wash out my brush. I'm actually going to dip in my water and get some red and kind of thin it out like ink. And then I added the bloody little streaks to his eye here. You can do that or not do it. It's up to you. Kind of just kind of ziggy zaggy looking like he's got whacked in the eye. And I got to turn him. And I'm just grabbing the red and dipping in it and just giving him this crazy looking beat up, had a bad day. And that kind of goes with the red that's around the eye on the outside here. So there we have our crazy looking zombie. And I'm going to go back and I can see my rust through my red here. So I'm just going to touch that up a little bit more. Um, so at this point, I would actually seal him with my uh, matte sealer so he's not shiny and more natural looking. Um, then I would let that dry, and then I would take my brush-on gloss sealer. And I moved it. Oh, so here we go. We have our brush-on gloss sealer, and that was the um, one of the extras in your box. And it's number six, and it's in a little pot here. And it is white. Um, but once you brush it on and it dries, it turns um, clear. So I did, and I'm just using my liner brush again. You just dip in your pot. And I um, put a couple layers of this on my blood so it has a nice shiny wet look. So I did that on each bloody area. And again, as it dries, it gets um, clear. And it'll be shiny because it's the gloss one and not the flat one. So just get yourself a nice layer of gloss sealer on all those little bloody areas. And you can even do a second coat and that'll even make it a little bit more glossy. But you just brush it on. And then I actually put it on both eyes as well to give them uh, the wet eye look. And on the blood around the eye here. Just brush it on the eye parts. And you want to make sure it's dry before you do this so you don't smear everything like I just did. But I guess that's okay. It looks like him makes him look a little bit crazy, which he kind of is. Had a rough day. So there we go. Once it dries, it'll be all nice and clear, and he'll be looking like this guy. So that is your Monster Mania September Biss Box. Um, this is our zombie. So there you go. He's all painted and ready to go. Thank you.